everybody, and welcome to the show we like to call Racing from Delaware Park. Delaware Park. I'm Rich Glazier, and we're going to take a look at Monday's races on a very dreary, yucky, rainy Monday. But you know what I say? A dreary, yucky, rainy day at Delaware Park is better than a good day anywhere else. And I mean it. So we had nine races. No. We had eight races. Eight races today, all on the sloppy track. And actually, I don't think it did rain during the day. But boy, has it rained the last few days. And that, that track was legitimately sloppy. So we're going to take a look at that. And you know what? Uh, some people like to bet the mutters. Their mutter was a mutter. Their fodder was a mutter. And uh, we all know that story. Uh, but because of the muddy and sloppy track, there was no turf today. So that means Bungie's pick, which his name was Dungy. He was so excited about that. That didn't count because it was off the turf. So come on down, Bungie, and give us one for Wednesday. And here he is. Oh, oh, Bungie says there's no way they'll be on the turf on Wednesday. Why bother giving a pick? Well, why'd you come down? Why don't you go over my records? Oh, okay, we can do that. All right. Just happen to have them handy here, Bungie. Did they meet of your approval? <laughs> yeah. Bungie's had 23 selections so far this year which would be $2 a bet, $46. And he's had six winners, and they've totaled $38 in uh, uh, pricing. So he's uh, down $8. Is that correct, Bungie? Are you going to get up for the year? Well, he hopes so. But he is on a one-race winning streak. He won his last one. And somebody actually told me they had it today, Bungie, so that should make you happy. All right. Wait, he, oh, he wants to look at him again. <laughs> okay, he concurs. All right, so no pick for Wednesday. Maybe that'll be an omen and they will be on the turf, but I, I think pretty chances are that rain's going to hold off that uh, turf for a while. So no pick for Bungie, but he's uh, down $8 for the year, and hopefully he'll make it. 14 out of 15 years of profits. So we'll see. All right, so that takes care of that. So I think we're ready to go now and take a look at who was in race number one on this September the 10th. And there is the field going five and a half furlongs in the opener. Coveralls was scratched. And that left the favorite to be Dad's City Girl at four to five. Here's Mr. Kern. Looks like Deidre Panis is getting back on board, and they're off. And it's a pretty good start for them all. Dad City Girl breaks well toward the outside. Gold is there down toward the inside, also rushing up St. Penny. They're across the track in the early going. And St. Penny with the rail shoots right to the front, opens up two lengths on the field. Golda toward the inside racing, second Patipa between horses and Dad City Girl up there three wide. Then two lengths of Sweet Tandy and Seldy Queen is quickly dropped back to last as they race into the turn. St. Penny showing the way, leads it by two. On the outside, Dad City Girl now in the second spot there, going after that leader, followed by Golda toward the inside. Sweet Tandy trying to mount a rally as Patipa begins to drop back, and the trailer still is Celtic Queen with a quarter to go. St. Penny hooked up with Dad City Girl, and Dad City Girl now to the front. Golda moves up toward the rail, trying to slip on through and does so as they turn for home. Dad's City Girl by two lengths. Golda toward the inside. Up on the outside, Sweet Tandy rallies. St. Penny's there between them, but it's Dad's City Girl in front still by two, two and a half lengths with gold on the outside. Sweet Tandy battling for second right now. It's Dad's City Girl to take the opener. Wins it by about two and a quarter. Gold hangs on to second over Sweet Tandy. St. Penny. And the favorite gets home promptly in the opener. Dad's City Girl for Antonio Keels for Jonathan Maldonado and Gladys Martinez. The odds on favorite returns 380, 260, 240. 
Galda was second with Suarez, 540-420. Sweet Tandy with Koa, six bucks to show. First race exact at $23, the try, 133.60, and the super with the one, 147.60. To the second we go. This one is a mile and a 16th on that sloppy oval. Scratch the one, and favoritism went to Miss Radar. Here's John Curran. They settle down. And they're off. Between horses, Slowpoke, up on the outside, Miss Radar, speeding up there, challenging for that lead now. Toward the inside, it's Baylor. Those three across the track into the turn. Estrella grounding next to line. And Blackwind is at the back. As they race around the first turn, from the outside, Miss Radar on the inside, Slowpoke, or heads up hard. Settled in perfectly in that third spot as they make their way around the bend. That is Baylor. Then a gap of about five lengths further back to Estrella Grande and Black Wind. Opening quarter in 23 and 3 as they reach the back stretch. Miss Radar now shakes clear of Slowpoke by a length and three quarters. Slowpoke toward the inside. Next on that's Baylor going along comfortably in third. Then a gap still of about six or seven lengths to the trailing duo of Black Wind and Estrella Grande. As they race toward the half mile marker, it's Miss Radar leading it now by two and a half lengths. Baylor in pursuit second as Slowpoke has dropped back a bit. Then a gap of five more to Black Wind trying to pick it up, and Estrella Grande is at the back. Half in, 48 flat into the turn. Miss Radar being pursued by Baylor as they race into the turn. Slowpoke is hanging in there, coming back for more, looking for a rail opening and finds one. Three across the track, and now Black Wind has joined the fray also. Only one out of Estrella Grande. Round the bend, Miss Radar has thrown in the towel, and Baylor now clear in front by three. On the inside, Black Wind has taken over second with Slowpoke third. At the top of the turn, it is Baylor in command by three lengths. Only shot right now to challenge is Black Black wind down toward the inside. Slowpoke's going evenly in third. Miss Radar's dropped out of it. And Estrella Grand now passing that one. With a furlong to go, it's Baylor still in front by three lengths. Toward the inside, Black wind made a run but couldn't quite sustain it. It is going to be Baylor to take this under. Relu Gutierrez winning it by three. Black wind getting second, followed by Slowpoke. And a distant fourth, Estrella Grande. Well, there you go. Elgin Baylor. Well, I don't know who it's named for, but... She certainly ran well. Baylor wins it for Ray Lou Gutierrez. He won a lot of races down at Gulfstream and decided to come up to the Mid-Atlantic area. And he won a race here Saturday, and he wins one today. And he won both of them for trainer Tony Pecorero. Philip DeCosmo, the owner. Baylor pays $6, $4, and $2.80. Could be named for the college, Baylor College University. Uh, Black Wind was second with Rodriguez, 580-360. And Port, I always feel bad for this horse. Slowpoke. <laughs> Slowpoke ran third with Uski, 240. The exact, the 30-60, the try, 60-20. The double, 940, no super in that race. Claimed. Yes, there was a claim, and look who it was. Slowpoke <laughs> got claimed by James Lawrence the third. All right, let's go to the third. Speaking of third, and this one is for two-year-olds, and they're going to go five and a half furlongs, and the favorite was Sweet Caden at even money. So let's listen to the golden tones of John Curran. Two-year-olds behaving nicely, we're about set. And they're off. And it's a pretty good start for them all toward the outside. There goes Fact of War. Getting away well toward the inside. Rapid Ashcat is there and Sweet Caden splitting them now. Sweet Caden sticks a neck in front. 
Up on the outside, Fact of War Racing second, two lengths, the Rapid Ash Cat in third, followed by Tap and Cat fourth. Toward the inside, Belitnikov on the outside, Rocky's Warrior, Racehorse in a red, then McLean House in the trailer is the other part of the entry, Storm in Hong Kong. As they speed into the turn, Sweet Caden showing the way, leads it by two. Fact of War chasing second, three lengths to Tap and Cat in third, then Rocky's Warrior. Racehorse in a red trying to mount a rally, Rapid Ash Cat quickly dropping out of it. As they make the way around the bend with Sweet Caden to catch, leads it by a length and a half. Fact of War is chasing. Tap and Cat looks to move up toward the inside. Then three lengths further back, the Rockies Warriors. They turn for home with Sweet Caden still to catch. Leads it by two, two and a half lengths maybe. On the outside, Fact of War is not giving up. On the inside, Tap and Cat still with a shot. It's Sweet Caden in front by a length and a half still. On the outside, Fact of War down toward the inside. Tap and Cat, they're both closing in. Sweet Caden trying to hang on, needs that wire, but Fact of War edging on by. Fact of War wins it. Tight for a second with Sweet Caden. And it was the first time starter, Fact of War by The Factor. It's becoming quite a uh, sire, this one, for turf and dirt. Fact of War, written by Rosario Montanez for Gary Capuano and the Nonstop Stable. Twelve sixty, six sixty, three dollars $3 to kick off the pick five. Tappan Cat ran a good race also with Keels, eight forty four twenty. The favorite, Sweet Caden, in that three-horse photo was third with Jose Ferrer, 220. Exact to 7440. The Tribe, 24940. The Double, 5320. Pick three, 4970. And the Super, 36270. And that winner was another Delaware certified winner. It's a daily occurrence, isn't it? All right. Let's go to the fourth. Wow. Shh. Elaine Tabman emphasized that one. I wonder if she certified that horse herself. Do you own a farm in Delaware, Elaine? No. No. Okay. Just checking. See if there's a conflict of interest here. All right. Fourth race at one mile. And we had three scratches in here. The four, the six, the seven. So that left just four to go. Uh, let's see. The favorite was Skipper Dancer. Here's John. And they're off. Brahms Romp. Got away a step slowly. Gallows Bay goes for that lead, joined by Sakaru. Skipper Dance is going to move up there instead of tucking in, moving up there three wide into that turn. We'll lose a little bit of ground there. And the slow starter was Brahms Romp. From the outside... Slight advantage now goes to Sakaru with Gallows Bay right there. Skipper Dancer racing in third and Brahms Romp tucked in toward the inside as they make their way around the first turn. Opening quarter goes in 26 seconds flat. Seems awfully slow as they race down the backstretch and Sakaru takes command. Skipper Dancer on the outside, Gallows Bay on the inside. A length and a half further back to Brahms Romp as they race down the Delaware backstretch. On the front end, it's Sakaru by a length. On the inside, Gallows Bay is trying to come back. And up on the outside, Skipper Dancer. A length and a half further back to Brahms Romp. Only three and a half lengths separates the field as they pass the half mile marker. Opening half in 52 and 2. It does seem awfully slow as they race into the turn. On the front end, it's Sakaru. And on the inside, Gallows Bay. Skipper Dancer under a drive now. And Brahms Romp, the trailer is still wide open. Only two and a half lengths from front to back. Sakaru on the outside, Gallows Bay on the inside. They're head to head. It's still three lengths to Skipper's Dancer and Brahms Romp trying to rally. They're paired off with a quarter to go. Gallows Bay on the inside, Sakaru on the outside. Turn home together. On the inside, Brahms Romp is trying to rally and Skipper Dancer next in line. They've got three sixteenths to go and Gallows Bay leads it by a length and a half. Brahms Romp still rallies on the inside. Skipper Dancer's coming back for more. Three with a shot. Sakaru not even out of it. On the inside, here comes Brahms Romp slipping on through and Brahms Romp will ride the rail to victory and Skipper Dancer at game second. Gallows Bay faded to third. And Bronze Romp romps to victory for uh, what an angel. Angel Suarez, Jamie Ness, Gumpster Stable, and Jagger Incorporated. $5.280, no show wagering. Skipper Dancer with Rendon, two twenty. Exact to thirteen forty. There was no try. The double forty three eighty, the pick three eighty four bucks, the pick four two nineteen eighty, and there was no soup for you today. Now the fifth race was 
the Fergentry World Cup of Nations amateur riders race. We've had an amateur male race. We've had an amateur female race. This race is the championship with women and men in the race to determine the, the champion. And it was off the turf at one mile and 70 yards. Scratch the one, three, five, six, and eight. And Vibe was the favorite. So let's watch the amateurs go in race five. I've started to pick four. Let's jock aboard. In there, off. Lon's True Passion breaks well and right to the front. Vibe racing second. Kingslayer being hustled toward the inside by Rose. And up on the outside, Starship Frontier looking for a spot and doesn't seem to find one. Will be caught wide around the bend. Montauk Man is next in line as they race around that turn. And your trailer is good save. Lon's True Passion by a length and a quarter with the favorite. Vibe right there in a good stalking spot second. Appears to be well in hand. Then a gap of three to Kingslayer and Starship Frontier side by side. Then a gap of two and a half lengths, the Montauk man and far back to good save as they straighten away. Opening quarter in 24 seconds flat. They race down the back stretch. Long's true passion, a long shot. Up on the outside, the favorite vibe, their heads apart. Right there, Kingslayer is going to make a three wide early move down the backside. Next line, Starship Frontier going evenly in fourth. Then a gap of five to Montauk man, another six lengths further back to good save. Vibe and Kingslayer going head to head. Lon's True Passion trying to hang in there in third. After half in 48 and one. A gap of three lengths to Starship Frontier in a good spot of good enough. Racing in fourth and a gap of eight lengths further back to the trailers. Montauk Man and good save. Round the bend they race. And on the front end it is Vibe and Kingslayer. Dropping out of it, Lon's True Passion. Next in line, Starship Frontier. Doesn't have much punch. Looks like a two-horse affair right now with a quarter to go. And the favorite, Vibe, is showing the way. Vibe, ridden by Lemaire from France, leads it as they head for home. The six in, 113 and three. Kingslayer made that early run down the back stretch. See if he has anything left for the furlong grounds. But it's Vibe in front, hanging on by three and Vibe is in control right now. Kingslayer and Rose racing second. Far back to the rest of them. Battling for third. Good save a late rally. But it's going to be Vibe to win this one. Vibe with Alexis Lemaire from France will win this by three and a half. Kingslayer with Rose of Germany getting second. Looks like Starship Frontier with Finkenhagen of Norway got third. Well, I hope you had good vibes there because Vibe gets the job done. I have to mention that Duncan Patterson, the chairman of the Racing Commission, Picked this horse to win, and it won. Vibe with Alexis Lemire of France. Jamie Ness, the trainer, a run to win stable in Jagger Incorporated. That gives Jamie two wins on the car. Five dollars, three dollars, two twenty. Kingslayer with Rose of Germany. Three sixty to forty. Starship Frontier with Finkenhagen from Norway, 240. Exact to 1660, the try 4880. The 1 9 Mike Walsh number double, 1840. The pick three, 6930. And the super with the two, $82.10. Already we're up to the sixth race, we're just flying around. And I just have to call attention to the one horse because in my all my years of doing this, 31 years now, I've never seen this before. Number one, Soon Mia Soon has been <laughs> away from the races. Well, she didn't run in 15, 2016, or 2017. She hadn't run since September of 2014, a four-year layoff. I've never seen that before. And she opened up at three to one. But as you see, she drifted up to 16 to one. Scratch the seven. Will the four-year layoff horse do it? Or will it be the four, the three to five favorite moonshot? Or somebody else? Let's watch this intriguing sixth race. And they're off. Presenter breaks well. Moonshot toward the inside goes right with that one. Up on the outside, be good to us. Northern Prancer. Soon me as soon. 
off that four-year layoff is showing some early foot as they move down the back stretch. Presenter leaves it by two. Moonshock racing second. Soon Mia Soon up on the outside. Northern Prancer. Length further back to Lady Gregoria. And Be Good to Us is at the back as they approach the half mile marker. Presenter on the front end by a length and a quarter. Moonshock toward the outside. Lady Gregoria on the inside. Heads apart in second and third. Northern Prancer is a close up fourth. Then Soon Mia Soon. And the trailer still Be Good to Us as they race into the turn. Presenter by two lengths. Moonshock in pursuit. Lady Gregoria toward the inside. Northern Prancer still with a shot. Only ones out of it are Soon Mia Soon. And be good to us. Around the bend, it's still Presenter showing the way. Digging in there. Now opens up two, two and a half lengths on the field. Lady Gregoria cuts that corner nicely. Moonshock is in between horses. Up on the outside. Northern Prancer for long to go. Presenter is digging in. Moonshock's trying to come back for more. Toward the inside, Lady Gregoria. Moonshock is gaining some ground. Presenter trying to hold on. Presenter on the front end. Moonshock, the only challenge right now. Presenter is digging in and holding sway. Presenter will prevail. Moonshot second best. I think Northern Prancer up for third over Lady Gregoria. Presenter taking that one for the leading jockey at Delaware Park. Carol Sedeno. Cece, we like to call her. Mike Gorham, the trainer for the Old Coach Farm. 580, 240, two ten. Moonshock with Gutierrez, 220-210. Northern Prancer, not to be confused with Northern Dancer, with Cintron, 220. Exact at 10 bucks. The try, 1440. The double, 16. The pick, 331. And the super, 1190. And the four-year-old, four-year layoff horse, did not win. All right. In fact, I hope he won't get mad at me for telling you this, but John Kern said if that horse off the four-year layoff won, he would never bet again. <laughs> anyway, he, he's safe. Uh, I don't think there's anything that would stop him from betting, by the way. All right, enough of that. Seventh race, off the turf. As you can see, the distance stays the same, a mile and an eighth. Scratch the one, the two, the four, the five, the nine. This would have been Bungie's race, but it doesn't count because it's off the turf. Uh, he liked Dungie. He was so excited that Bungie was picking Dungie. Uh, that was the three to five favorite on the dirt. Let's watch and see what happens. Well, that's it. And they're off. Donji goes for that lead. They're across the track, all five across the track in the early going. Nobody seemed to take back only asset allocation at this time. Donji to the front, Chateau de Vazil up on the outside, three wide. It's Gadget Man. Stadium will try and tuck in behind that group as they race into the turn, and the trailer is asset allocation. Still three across the track. Donji is there with Chateau de Vazil and Gadget Man caught wide around the bend. Stadium does settle nicely in that fourth spot, then a gap of four to asset allocation. Opening quarter went in 23 and 2, and Donji will try and take him gate to wire. Leads it by a length and a quarter over Chateau de Vazil and Gadget Man. It's about four lengths further back to Stadium and five more to asset allocation as they make their way down the back stretch. Donji and Jose Ferrar leads it by a length and a half. Gadget Man toward the outside, Chateau de Vazil toward the inside, heads apart in second and third. Now it's about two lengths to Stadium, edging a bit closer in fourth, and six more to asset allocation as they approach the half mile marker, opening half 47 and four, half mile to run with Donji to catch. Gadget Man chasing. Stadium now trying to get underway in third, Chateau de Vazil toward the inside, and asset allocation trying to join the party as they race into the turn. Donji by two lengths. Chateau, make that chasing Gadget Man up on the outside, Stadium as they race around the bend. Asset allocation now trying to pass Chateau de Vazil in fourth, but looks like a two horse affair right now with Donji still showing the way. Stadium is gaining some on the outside in second as Gadget Man begins to drop back, but Donji still to catch, going a bit wide at the top of the stretch. Gadget Man leads it. Stadium is in pursuit in second, followed by Chateau. Make that Gadget Man racing third. They've got a furlong to do, and Donji trying to hold on. Still leads it by two. Stadium is trying, but not cutting the margin right now. It's still Donji in front with Stadium chasing in second, and Donji. Donji will prevail, wins it by two. Stadium had to settle for second, followed by Gadget Man third. And the winner was at Donji. Bungie.
Dungey wins anyway, even on the sloppy track, and he did it for a very potent combination. Jose Ferrer, leading jockey at Monmouth. Jorge Navarro, leading jockey, leading trainer at Monmouth. And as I said in my paddock prattle, he wins it here at 50-some percent, and he'd already lost two races, so you knew he was, percentages said he was going to win this one, and he did. Dungey did the work for him. Paid 340, 220, 210. Stadium was second with Pedroza, 280, 220. And Gadget Man with Rodriguez, 320. Angel Rodriguez, 320. The exacta, 880. The try, 2220. The double, 1640. Pick three, 1630. Pick five, 46110. And no superfecta. Quinn! Yes, Stadium was claimed by Hugh McMahon. Brings us to the eighth and final for the Arabians. And they scratched what would have been the big favorite, Tiffany's Dream. That made the big favorite mystical at two to five. And they're off. Between horses, Sergeant Pepper breaks well. Captain Bush toward the inside. They're a little bunched up there. Up on the outside, Zell's Bells. Mystical's in between. In between horses, as they move down the back stretch, they're really jockeying for position in the early going there. And between horses, it's the veteran Sergeant Pepper. Zell's bells toward the outside. Captain Bush has the rail. Two lengths further back to Mystical as they race into the turn with burn notice, and the trailer now dropping back and out of it right now is Big Eye. On the front end, it's Sergeant Pepper by a half. Zell's bells right there toward the outside. Captain Bush has the rail. Left and further back to Burn Notice trying to gain some ground. Mystical is going evenly right now in fifth. Still far back to Big Eye as they move around the bend. On the inside, Captain Bush re-engaging Zell's Bells for that lead as Sergeant Pepper begins to drop back up on the outside. It's trying to move up there. Far outside, Mystical is going to be five wide. Entering the turn, your favorite as they head for home. Captain Bush on the inside, Zell's Bells on the outside. They've got three lengths now on burn notice and Mystical in the center of the track with a furlong to go. Captain Bush is digging in, fending off Zell's Bells. Mystical with a belated rally. It's Captain Bush in front and Captain Bush is holding on. Captain Bush will prevail, gonna be tight for second. Zell's Bells and Mystical late run. Mystical may have gotten up for second. And it was Captain Bush coming off a sprint win. So his speed was sharp, Jose Betancourt for Simon Hobson at Pinewood Stables. 9.62.82.10, Mystical trying to shorten up from a route, couldn't get up, Ryan Powell, 2.20.210, but also trained by Simon Hobson. And Zell's Bells with Ortega, 2.60, the Simon Hobson exacta, 16.20, the try, 34.20, the double, $23, the pick three, 30.50, pick four, 76.30, Super $44. And that takes care of that dreary Monday card of eight races. Eight races and off the turf and an amateur race. Let's see if the handle suffered. Not, not really. We still did a million. One million, 44,984. So thank you for that. Our next live racing day is Wednesday. Hope you come on out then and join us. Thanks for watching, everybody, and good night.